Welcome to another video. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And this is a six patterns video. We got a little bit of a curveball for you today. Yeah, this one's this one's a challenge. Should we start with no history or start with a little bit of history? I don't know that the history is gonna help up front. So we can we can I think backfill you better, the history. Yeah, you should bump into this histopathology sort of cold so that you you bond to what you're seeing and try to figure out why it's not other things. So to me, at low magnification, this surgical lung biopsy has pleura on both sides of this particular cut. Yeah. The way it was put in. So probably a more of a peripheral wedge biopsy. Exactly. And to me, at low magnification, I'm seeing a lot of pink. So I'm thinking fibrosis. So it's UIP. Could be UIP. I mean, I'll tell you that some of that fibrosis is right underneath the pleura, and it's tracking along the bronchovascular bundles in a weird way. So, but I thought subpleural fibrosis was a feature of UIP of IPF. It is, but you know what? And paraseptal fibrosis. And paraseptal, and even you know you can get some accentuation of fibrosis along interlobular septa within the biopsy that simulate airways. So I can't tell from this magnification. I see a branching structure on the image. This structure? Yeah. And it branches here? It branches and it yeah. looks like you know a cowboy sitting on a horse. It's got a leg to the right, leg to the left. I'm not sure how you got that, but that's okay. Well, okay, we're in so Arizona, yippee ki -yay. So uh, I'll tell you another thing I think about because I think the branching structures are in fact airways. And scarring around the airways, it brings up a whole differential diagnosis. But scarring along the airways and also in the pleura brings up a very focused differential diagnosis. If I looked at higher magnification and I found a bunch of granulomas in this fibrosis, this would be a great sarcoidosis. Or even uh, some rare granulomas. Yeah, if they were could, well be formed. Up. Yeah. could be burned up. Burnt they got to be well formed. Yeah. So we don't have that, but... What I'm saying is the distribution to me is a perilymphatic distribution. Uh -huh. Because the lymphatics run, run along the bronchovascular bundles and they also run in the pleura. True. So diseases that affect both the bronchovascular bundles and thicken the pleura. And the interlobular septa. And the interlobular septa have a lymphatic or perilymphatic, the radiologists call it, distribution. And everybody should think when you hear a lymphangitic or perilymphatic distribution, everybody should think first... Sarcoidosis. sarcoidosis and then lymphangitic tumor lymphangitic carcinomatosis yeah exactly like a mammary carcinoma metastatic oh absolutely it'll be bluer at low magnification but so so we're in a really weird category here because if i don't find any granu well-formed granulomas i don't have a really a lot of things in the differential except one thing and because we've seen a bunch of it 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 comes to mind but if you haven't seen it you're never going to think about it probably not now if you look from low power here sarcoid should be more pink yeah right i mean you'd expect to see this looks a little cellular hyaline yeah, sclerosis yeah, yeah. and this looks a little bit cellular so although the distribution is perfect for sarcoid i'm not seeing the nodules and the dense sclerosis that you expect to see in yep. sarcoidosis yep. so should we go to higher power and see what's in this area? I think we have to. I, it's with trepidation for sure because, uh, you know, once you throw granulomas out, pulmonary pathologists, all pathologists have a hard time with identifying features of things that are not tumor. So if you don't see a granuloma, then trying to describe what is in here is a really hard thing. It's really challenging. So here we are. We're in this thickened Wow. interlobular septae yeah. or bronchovascular bundle, whatever it might be. Oh, look at that, Max. And we can see the interface with the lung. It's pretty abrupt. But doesn't that look a little bit like um, like snakes with a broad base sticking off the edge of this? You know what I mean? Like, like serpiginous yep. extensions off of the edge like that? Yep. And the only place I've seen that commonly is... The smoking-related interstitial lung disease called PLCH, pulmonary Langerhans-Sahl's gistocytosis. So that, to me, is is interesting. Fascinating. Finding. Yeah, I think. It, would you've noticed it? I don't know. 
Maybe. Maybe I think not. we get so focused on what cells are in the middle yeah. of it. What is here? We forget about the edge. What is here? They look like pale cells. Very pale cells. And there's dense collagen sclerosis in the background. Mixed right? into it. Mixed in with these pale cells. And what cells are those? Well, I guess some of them are reniform, so, uh, have a lot of cytoplasm. I got to think those are some kind of histiocyte. They look histiocytic. Yeah. Right? Yep. And as we look through here, and you'll have to take our word for it, we go through this whole biopsy, multiple other slides. This is what all of the biopsy looks like. Not a granuloma to be seen. Instead, a mixed histiocytic and fibrotic process. Yeah. I call these fibrohistiocytic diseases yeah. with a lymphangitic distribution. Yep. And there's really only a few handful of diseases that kind of bubble to the top when you think about that yep. abnormality. And so what are they? Well, burned out sarcoidosis. Burned out sarcoid can have very few, if any, identifiable granulomas. Can be all sclerosis. Generally doesn't have this many free histiocytes hanging exactly. around. There's not enough inflammatory cells here for so-called roadside Dorfman disease. Although that is one of the diseases I think about when yep. we're talking about fibrohistiocytic yep. diseases in the lymphangitic distribution. Yep. Now, systemic Langerhans cell histiocytosis could involve the lung like this. Yeah. But our CD1A stain doesn't highlight these cells. So we do have some stain results. Wow. S100 so, is negative in these cells. Wow. Positive for CD68. Positive for CD68. Positive for so, factor 13A. Positive for factor 13A. So they are histiocytes. Yeah. Now, is there anything in the clinical history or the imaging studies that could help us in a case like this? Well, You're like, if, I'm stuck. Yeah. I've got a fibrohistiocytic lesion that's in a lymphangitic distribution. I'm thinking about Rosai Dorfman. What can I go to in the clinical history to think about? So the imaging studies sh should show, because it's lymphangitic, it should show reticulation that it involves the pleura and bronchovascular bundles and right. interlobular septa. So it's going to kind of look like sarcoid to the radiologist, but not as nodular as sarcoid. True. So they're going to be saying, you know, kind of like sarcoid, but some kind of weird fibrotic sarcoid that's present in places you wouldn't expect sarcoid to be. Remember, sarcoid is a disease that begins at the apex and over time can spread down to the upper parts of the lower lung zones. This disease is everywhere. So they're going to get weird with you on this. They're going to say, this has to be lymphangitic carcinoma. And you're like, I don't see any carcinoma here. But the truth is, this particular disease is highly malignant. I'm sorry to say, clinically. Clinically. It's progressive. And no one survives it. But what about the thoracic vertebrae in that CT scan? That's a very specific question, though, Max. If the, if, if the radiologist bothers to go or to the I bone windows. If, if, if it's a thoracic radiologist, they will look in this context. They'll see that smooth reticulation. They'll see this, these, these lines coming off the pleura into the lung, these smooth, irregular lines like worms hanging from the ceiling. It's a nasty that's a, analogy. That's a terrible Sorry, analogy. But, you know, it's important to have stuff that binds. Are there worms up there? <laughs> that binds into your brain so you remember stuff. So a thoracic radiologist would probably go and look at the long tubular bones and look for a very specific finding called osteosclerosis. Osteosclerosis. The other finding that they have around the kidneys is perinephric fibrosis, fibrosis in the fat surrounding the kidneys. Very odd findings, but the, the key, I think, to take home from this is that these patients have systemic manifestations that you can see radiographically. And so to diagnose this disease, which is? Erdheim-Chester disease. Erdheim-Chester disease, in isolation with just a lung biopsy. Is a stretch. Should be taken cautiously. Yeah. Instead, maybe if all we had was this and we had no clinical history, we'd call it 
a lymphangetically distributed fibrohistiocytic lesion C comment and would give the differential of those lesions, ECD, Rosi Dorfman disease, systemic Langerhan cell histiocytosis, yeah. those types of diseases. Yeah. And then make a comment in the suggest a look at the long tubular bones for osteosclerosis and perinephric fibrosis might be useful. Useful. In this particular case. So now you're more than just a pulmonary pathologist. You're looking at the whole patient with a rare disease and you're saying, actually, I know something about the whole disease and I want to be helpful. You don't want to be uh, like little Lord Fauntleroy. You don't want to be the proud pigeon. You want to be somebody who's helpful. You say, look, I am a fount of knowledge. I want to help. Okay. I don't want to be proud of it. I want to help you. So help your that, clinician. That's why they send you the biopsy. They want direction as to what to do next. So they send it to you and they're hoping that you will give them that direction back. Yep. yep. So hope you enjoyed this case. Rare case, beautiful example of Erdheim Chester. You won't see a disease. better one. It does not get any better than this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and comment below and we'll see you next time. Next